Hey guys, it is Patrick. And before you dive into this intermediate accounting lesson, I wanted you to know that you can actually download the notes for this section and specifically this lesson that you're about to watch if you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com or you can head over to the description link that's below and I'll put that link to those notes below where you can find them, download them, and print them, and follow along as you watch this lesson. So go do that, and here is your intermediate accounting lesson. All right, in this lesson, we're gonna take a look at measurement. This is something that you're probably familiar with from principles of accounting or fundamentals of accounting, um, but here we're just gonna really define it from an intermediate standpoint. So let's take a look here at measurement. So in financial accounting, you learned that measurement was the actual cost or the book value of a purchase. In intermediate, on the other hand, we can expand on this um, just to make it more specific to the different ways we would have measurement um, defined for a particular transaction. So in intermediate accounting, we expand on that thought and show you that it's just more than book value. So we told you that everything was booked into the books at book value to make it easy. But in reality, the things that we put on our financial statement might not always be book value, although that is going to be the biggest one we do have some fair values that we're introducing you to in intermediate accounting. So the first one here is the historical cost. This would be that cost that you incurred uh, based measurement on the amount given or received in the original exchange of the transaction. I would say 80%, 90% of the financial statement is based on historical cost. So there's no change there. But there are some elements where we might need to change the way that we measure a particular transaction into the books based on what GAAP tells us to do. The next one here is net realizable value. This is based measurement on the amount of cash into which the asset or liability will be converted in the ordinary course of business. So net realizable value is often used with inventory uh, when we need to do inventory adjustments. We also have current cost, which is different from historical cost. This is the cost that would be incurred to purchase or reproduce an asset. This is typically used in inflationary economies. Um, the reason why we would use current costs is because the historical cost is nowhere near appropriate uh, because of the inflation that has gone on with that product. So maybe it did cost us $50 for that product to bring in house, but now it's costing us $90. Well, what's more useful to a decision maker, it's not the $50, it's the $90. So we might book something in at the current cost. Very rare, but it could be a cost that we use. Then we've got present value. This has to do a lot with debt. With debt, we've got the present value of the minimum of the payments that we're going to make. For leases, we use a present value, present value of the minimum lease payments. So this is the measurement of future cash flows discounted for the time value of money. So leases are an example of that. So we're not necessarily taking the cost, we're really taking the, the overall cost, bringing it back to today's value based on present value techniques. Last one is fair value. This is usually used for investments, measurement on the price that would be received to sell assets or transfer liabilities in an ordinarily market transaction. So stocks are often measured at fair value. Also, if you have a going concern issue, then you'll also use a fair value. So that is a look at measurement. Again, we're just trying to expand and help you understand that it's more than just cost. There are now other aspects to consider when it comes to measuring a particular transaction. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you enjoy what you saw, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to write something in the comment section below like, I don't know, what's your favorite superhero? If you are looking for the next intermediate accounting lesson, make sure you click on this button right over here. And if you want to head to my website and see all of the lessons that are available, make sure you head to my website right here. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.